Hey everyone, welcome back. I am so glad you're here because this one is special. So special that I'm just gonna let it play uninterrupted without comment after I give you a quick setup. I cannot believe this was allowed to happen on MSNBC and for once it left me feeling a little hopeful. So Joe Scarborough hosted an interview that included Mehdi Hassan, who is one of MSNBC's most far, far left, racially paranoid, psychotic hosts. And a guy named Shadi Hamid, who is a senior fellow at the Brookings Institute, a professor at Fuller Seminary, and a writer for The Atlantic. They argue about the so-called threat to democracy, and amazingly, Shadi Hamid brings up some points that I regularly talk about on this channel. Hassan's responses are so predictable and obviously flawed. Enjoy. Ultimately, voters have the right to vote for someone who has crazy ideas like the Muslim ban. Um, that Those are illiberal. Those are things that go Shut against it. individual rights and Shut freedoms. Yeah, there's a, there's not, a, wait, okay. Can I jump in? There's a, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of straw men here. Nobody's saying they don't have the right to vote for crazy ideas. Nobody's saying that all Trump voters are fascists. You use the word authoritarian. I'm fine with authoritarian. I mean, we're now into pedantry here. I would argue many Trump voters would be very upset being called authoritarian, but you're calling Trump authoritarian. So let's agree. He is something that is not normal. He's a threat to democracy. He's not just anti-immigration, Shadi. He wanted to build a moat, put alligators in it, and shoot immigrants in the legs. If that is not fascism, I don't know what is. Oh, cool. I didn't hear about the alligator thing, Mandy, but if you just, if I can just finish the thought here. Um, look, the danger is when you, okay, I, I would just want to put the question back to you, Mandy. What are you actually suggesting we do if Trump wins fair and square? Let's forget about any like foul play or anything like that. If he wins in 2024, what are you going to do? Are you going right, to respect fi that result? Word, I mean, I don't Final accept word, the premise Matt. of your question. If he wins in 2024, let's forget the foul play. How can I forget the foul play when no, right no, now he, the Republican Party is trying to change and, state and the legislature rules, clear. voting rules? Shadi, right now they are taking steps to make sure that the 2024 so, election is not a free okay. and fair election. You keep well, this just is concerning, pushing Mandy. that you're away. Not willing you to, cannot you're both not willing sides to this. accept that outcome then. That's concerning no, I'm to not, me. I'm not, hold on, hold on. I, I'm, I'm willing to accept an outcome of a free and fair election. Shadi, as of right now. I'm sorry, I have to stop. I promise I wouldn't. But look, it's just different when he does it. Do you believe the 2024 election will be a free and fair election if black people are denied the right to vote, if there is when racist gerrymandering continues, the right to vote, if that, election that, workers are threatened with death? Black people have been, t the, the vote has been taken away from them. I it's mean, the first you've heard the black just, voters are being disenfranchised in America. This is exaggerated Sorry, rhetoric that is that it's raising the existential wow. stakes. And what I would like each of us to do Have is to try to, to lower recently, the temperature. Shanti? You're not willing to do Sh that. Hold what, on, Shadi. Do you not think our democracy is under threat? This is a very simple question. You think that election work is being harassed, trying to overturn elections, uh, death threats to election officials, uh, changing of voting laws, disenfranchisement of people in Florida. Okay, you think none of that is affecting the free and fair election in 2024? But, Seriously. But the other side of it is that when you raise the specter of a fascist threat, Shadi, can stop I just, the both let, sides. just let me? Only okay. one party is trying let to me, overturn democracy okay, right now. Deep. Please stop okay. the both sides. Okay, when you raise the specter, of a fascist threat, it justifies taking extraordinary measures to suppress that threat. And that's right. why sometimes people like the idea of suppressing democracy in order to save it. We think that so much is at stake that we have to do anything it takes to prevent Trump or any or someone like him from winning in 2024. That can lead to overreach. I worry your rhetoric can lead us to do things we shouldn't do in a democratic context and for us as liberals to go too far into demonizing our, our opponents and, and the, the other side. That is not sustainable right. in a democracy. We're going we're gonna to have to leave keep it our here. Democracy. Right, he says he wants to keep democracy, but also stop mentioning that there's another side because there's only one side, according to Hassan. It's pretty wild how he just lists off a bunch of mostly unsubstantiated conspiracy theories to justify his position that him regarding the election is stolen or saying that it might be stolen. That's completely different and it's not election denial because when he does it, it's real because he believes it is. Like when he says that black people are being denied the right to vote, 
vote and then points to Georgia as proof of his conspiracy theory. But they're having record voter turnout there. And I'm sorry, Trump can't just be an authoritarian. To be an authoritarian, you need some sort of like institutional support base. He already doesn't have the media, which he would definitely need. Currently, the Democrats and Joe Biden have all the power with a mass media that acts as an extension of the party. Instead of holding them accountable, protecting them from accountability. Sounds pretty authoritarian. Anyway, that was a great segment. Good on Shadi Hamid for bringing up these points because absolutely nobody else in the media is doing so. And it's actually quite important that we do it because just like he said, if they believe the rhetoric that they're spewing here and have been spewing for the last couple of years, if the midterms don't go the way Democrats want to and then the 2024 election also doesn't go the way they want to, do you think that they're just gonna let that go? Not for a moment. I've said over and over since the 2000 election that Democrats are the ones who started election denial and using violence in response. And up until 2020, the Republicans had never done it. So basically they escalated it. If you don't think that the Democrats are gonna escalate it even further after their next election loss, you're kidding yourself because all of this rhetoric that we're hearing is being done for a reason. It's being done to justify their actions, just like Hamid pointed out here. Anyway, go over to his Twitter, check him out, and make sure to hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.